Today we are going to learn about Janta Mahapatra's Dawn at Puri. The poem is laced with thought and idea. Indeed, it is reflective. Just a few lines of poesy mesmerize our thoughts and emotions, our capacity to understand the imagery and symbols. The poem is scenic as well as landscapic. However, before we go to the poem directly, we need to focus something else. Now, if you look at its title, what do you feel? Yes, indeed it is romantic. Now, the moment we are thinking about Dawn at Puri, it gives a certain impression that of a beautiful romantic sight. Now, if I uh, show you some pictures, you can get it better. See that, this is one of them. So Dawn at Puri suggests like this, uh, a photograph uh, fully, a scenic one, a beautiful, an abode for photographers who can take beautiful pictures so all over we always have a beautiful peace calm soothing atmosphere uh, whenever we read the title Dawn at Puri but there is something definitely lies within now if we move back to the certain other points uh, certain uh, sorry not the points uh, certain if we move back to certain other pictures here we we'll have another one now people used to get such kind of pictures at dawn uh, in the Puri beach, Puri sea beach. So whenever it appears in front of our eyes, we have always uh, a feeling of calmness, a soothing atmosphere. Whatever you look at, uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever you go through, it doesn't matter. But it always gives you the pleasure. So whenever we try to think about dawn at Puri, it gives definitely a sense of pleasure a sense of beautiful calm soothing romantic atmosphere however probably this man has something else in his mind while writing this short poem the poem is in the pithy however we need to understand certain elements in it now john to mahapatro this is an earlier picture of him and let me show you the uh, recent one uh, one of the seminars he was talking about something so this is basically John the Mahabhatram now uh, if we go back to the central idea of the poem the clarification is strange and unlike any other poems so when we go through the poem we will understand but before that let me clear you something more the poem is basically ironic now we all know about irony and we have also read poems where um, ironies are abound in so naturally we have to understand the irony first and to get a clear look at this i have a certain elements for you for irony here we have see that irony is a figure of speech is a form of figure of speech in which the person delivering the ironic statement says something which is completely opposite to what they mean or what the real reality of the situation is so exactly opposite is meant of what is said and now there are three types of irony we don't need to go through all this verbal irony situational irony and dramatic irony uh, we will try to find out what kind of irony is here at Donna Puri now let us get examples of irony so that the idea should be properly clear now the examples of irony as we can find here see that uh, nothing is written in stone so exactly opposite is meant what does this picture signify in the stone there is indeed a writing but it is written nothing is written in stone thank you for driving carefully see that this is ironical and you understand why this is completely ironical now we have more pictures at least one of them yes here is another one so that how ironic funny the real life examples of irony and what is this so fitness there is a huge staircase and people are you know using the escalators to be fit so this is completely ironic so this is what irony is meant 
now as we are talking about romanticism that the very title donat puri incites amongst us a feeling of romanticism just a, a short glimpse to understand romantic ideas i need to present for you another picture and this one is painted in 1818 by caspar david friedrich a german painter uh, which is supposed to be the best work best classified work of romanticism now you can google about it you can also know the representation why is this called a good representation of romantic era but as you can express certain ideas of romanticism is here clearly visible looking beyond escapist tendency you know struggle or working hard passion for mountaineering etc and there are lots of various commentaries also about this painting uh, however we need to understand that in romanticism you need to do something beyond about your capability you need to go beyond your cap capacity or capability now you have to also understand that dawn at puri and the same time suggests that same amount of romantic idea now you need to understand also because i already have told you that this poem is ironical so it is not simply about romanticism if we go through fewer lines first three lines we will understand it better so without wasting any time let us go into the poem directly and we then will understand why is it uh, an ironical poem rather than a romantic one and how is it is it is expressed we also will uh, discover nadonak puri by jahanto mahapatra so that endless crow noises skull in the holy sands tilts its empty country country towards hunger first three lines in connection with the title donak puri you have to understand the poem is set in the town of puri which is situated definitely we all, we all know in orissa and in this symbolic and metaphorical poem the poet talks about the hollowness of the rites and rituals common in indian society the poem consists of six stanzas having three lines each there is no rhyme scheme now the poet is near a famous hindu temple situated on the bank of a river he finds numerous crows making noise and it should be noted that in the first stanza it indicates that there is a dead body that the crows want to eat hence the tone of the poem is quite a sad right from the beginning and there is a skull in the holy sands you see a skull in the holy sands tilt its empty country towards hunger Uh, the word holy is ironical here uh, skull in the holy sands because during cremation nothing is left except the ashes however the presence of the skull symbolizes the hollowness of rites and rituals of his community and also the poverty which dominates the poet's country that is india thus the town of puri here symbolizes the whole country and if the skull remains intact after cremation in such a holy and sacred city the poet wonders what would be the condition in other cities that are not holy so from the beginning there is a tone in the first stanza of sadness the poet is definitely not sadistic not even cynical because he doesn't want to create any impression any negative impression about india his own country rather he is pointing out realistically the need for some positivity some ideas and uh, because the holy sands tilt its empty country towards hunger it is nothing but the hungry state is being represented is being shown in the lines so it is the hollowness and it is a destructive nature it is the destructive side of the country which is not even holy so holy indeed becomes ironical now because the town of puri here symbolizes the whole country this indicates a rhetorical figure called synecdoche and let me show you about this 
Here, synecdoche is also a figure of speech in which the name of a part is used to refer to a whole. So it is either a part is referred by the whole or a whole is referred by the part. Uh, here is one example, the use of wheels to refer to a car. So wheels are just the part of the total car. Or Eliot's use of muddy fit uh, to refer to early morning crowds of people uh, hearing to work. So muddy fit suggests the crowd people, crowded people. The use of 20 eyes watched our um, every moment. These 20 eyes suggest 10 people. So naturally, these are all examples of part for the whole. Here also, because Puri as uh, symbolizing the whole country. So this is uh, one example of Sinak talking. And by using that Sinak talking, Jantha Mahapatra, the poet, probably tries to emphasize the line. Uh, the last line of the first stanza also has a reference to hunger, this particular word. Uh, and as we all know, that Jantra Mahapatra has another poem called hunger. Now, that will be referred uh, again in the latter part of the discussion. But presently, you just uh, remember this connection that the poem hunger has also a connection with this particular poem. So, you have the idea of uh, a comparison. You can bring a comparison. Now, continuing with the second stanza, it presents while on the other of the white clothes wearing widows are lined up in rows and queues to enter the great temple who have nothing left with them all standing in utter submission held by strong faith and belief see that white clad widowed women past the centers of their lives are waiting to enter the great temple now in the second stanza, if we can uh, have a closer look, the poet takes his attention towards white-clad widowed women. I'm coming to this great temple affair. This phrase is also significant and ironical. I'm coming later to this point. But previously, this white-clad widowed women, the women are white-clad we all know it is a natural sequence in Hinduism the women have to wear white clothes till death after their husbands die the poet rather than using widows call them widowed women see that here widowed women which points to the patriarchal norms of Indian society which make the woman widow after the death of her husband she has to wear watch saris give up worldly desires and sexual pleasures two now first the centers of their lives are waiting to enter the great temple past the centers of their lives centers here refer either to their husbands or desires because they are generally centered to their lives whatever may be the exact meaning they are not now without something which was their center that is purpose of their life so they have lost their centers and in that sense because they are widowed women uh, and they have lost their husbands centers maybe supposed to be the husband of their lives so they have lost their centers and that is the husbands of their lives and are waiting to enter the great temple see that here as i was talking about this greatness now this greatness the phrase great temple is quite ironical because the poet suggests the hollowness of rituals in the beginning the women are perhaps made to believe that the temple is great and they can find peace there only so see how even in few lines Jantha Mahapatra the poet creates a sense of hollowness even through the norm of patriarchy so he is also criticizing patriarchal society in these lines now these women who are now widowed see that 
if the center symbolizes the husband the line again suggests patriarchal dominance because they are uh, you see that are waiting to enter the great temple because they are they are in a line they uh, have to maintain a line so there is indeed a dominance because you have to be in logical sequence you have to follow the rules and regulations and who made these by the way the rules and regulations definitely the patriarchy the patriarchal society so in the patriarchal society the women are not free at all they have to create a center and they are bound by that center so these three lines indicate very generally the understanding capacity of a human being in particular that female are subjected to obey the rules and regulations created by the male dominated society and this dawn at puri the very romantic sequence indeed pointing out the same hollowness that has been presented in the first three lines and look at how because these women have to become selfless and make their husbands the centers of their lives and thus without them they are without identity and purpose so if you need to have an identity you need to have your husband in the center and without thinking anything you just stick to him all the all the time or always so as a woman as a female you have no identity at all and in fact here you can uh, create a comparison you can bring the comparison with uh, an introduction by Kamala Dash which also you have read where uh, Dash clearly goes against the patriarchal norms here clearly goes against the patriarchal norm in the poem uh, she is rebelling against the patriarchal society see that i wore a shirt and my brother's trousers cut my hair short and ignored my womanliness dress in saris be girl be wife they said be embroiderer be crew be a crawler with servants so these are the womanly nature and against these she is voicing against reveling against by doing such and such activities i wore a shirt and my brother's trousers so cut my hair short and ignored my womanliness so i am going to do exactly things which i like so i am not going to abide any kind of rules that has been propagated by the male dominated society by the male the, by the patriarch so here you can have a comparison between the dawn at puri's uh, idea white clad widowed women past the centers of their lives are waiting to center the great temple with uh, these lines of kamala das as an introduction so here we have another reference to the past ideas moving to the third stanza of the same poem their austere eyes stare like those caught in a net hanging by the dawn's shining stands of faith the eyes of the widowed women are described as austere austere here means without any desire for worldly pleasure and desire the women after losing their husbands have given up the world worldly lives the worldly desires so their austere eyes stare like those caught in a net now these austere uh, austere eyes they are like those caught in a net that is being desireless they seem to have been caught in a net a net is a symbolic net of the patriarchal society see that here mm, net is symbolic it's like a web uh, the uh, net of the patriarchal society like a trapped bird the women have lost the freedom of their mind and body so these women who are widowed women first of all they have lost all of their desires joys and uh, merry making fun of their lives now they are caught in a net see this is very painfully ironical these women are caught in a net like the birds trapped in a net hanging by the dawn's shining strands of faith so 
while standing there to enter the temple they are hopeful for a peaceful life entering the temple is the only desire left in them like seeing the morning light is the only desire and hope for a trapped bird so hanging by the dawn's shining strands of faith they are waiting to get a better ray of hope and in order to get that they are just standing in the line so they will have this um, better ray of hope so this ray of hope the the shining strands of faith this shining uh, dawns shining strands of faith now you have here a reference with another poem where uh, just recently you have read uh, by Orun Kolatkar's The Bar. In the poem The Bar, uh, if you can see this line, you search for the signs of daybreak in what little light spills out of us. So, so there is that uh, daybreak, the dawn, and the little light spills out of us. So there is that ray of hope over here in the line. And you can have uh, another line or lines outside the sun has risen quietly it aims through an eyelet in the top and and shoots like the old so the sun rays are coming inside the bus through the eyelet of the top the inside of the bus is the um, unholy area the dark region and the ray of hope is outside of the bus so the ray of hope is coming from the outside to the inside of the bus the dark region where this is the first lines the typulian flaps a button down on the windows of the straight trans transport bus all the way up to jejuri so this typulian flaps a button down and in that button down in that caged situation so you have no ray of hope just like um, the dawn at puri so these white clad widowed women and their austere eyes like those in caught in a net hanging by the dawn's a shining strands of it so they are just lining in order to get that peace of mind in order to get that uh, ray of hope in life now in doing this maybe the poet is raising questions against religion against god against faith and everything because these women whose fate whose lot are already fixed who are trapped who are caged in such a condition such a situation you cannot expect anything better uh, about their lot or about their fate so where these women are trapped where these women in hinduism um, are uh, unlike the free women of western culture or free women of uh, several other areas of uh, india because these women are already white clad and uh, because they are uh, the it is undeniable that their conditions are very sympathetic poor they are caught in such a situation they are already enmeshed in, a tr in the uh, strangle of the patriarchal hold so the patriarchy made their eyes austere and their stares are automatically like those caught in a net so these images these imagery mm, rather point out that the condition of for women in India or in Hinduism are not that good so therefore the first three lines endless crude noises a skull in the holy sands tilts its empty country towards hunger so this this is what uh, the poets idea it's empty country and the skull is that shameless uh, outlook shameless exposition towards that idea so because the crow is symbolic of something negative the skull is also symbolic of something destructive and hunger naturally suggests that the people are not getting anything to eat and in such a land in such a country you cannot imagine a better condition of this white clad widowed woman rather than this what has been already described in the poem now moving to the fourth stanza uh, the fail yearly light catches ruined leprous shells leaning against one another a mass of crouched faces without names the poet here describes the leprous shells who are ruined and are leaning against one another ruined and leaning against one another so leprous shells either 
is referring or are referring to the beggars who are always near the temple asking for money or the low caste people who are not allowed to enter the temple it's because of leprosy and we know in india leprosy patients are generally avoided they are devoid of any kind of touches so this is too much unscientific but still uh, hinduism as well as the india um, looks at it in that way and there are lots of advertisements against this that leprosy patients are not uh, meant to abhor there shouldn't be any abhorrence for them because it doesn't spread spread in the spread out in the touch if you touch that patient you should not have contaminated or uh, by leprosy it is not contagious at all so therefore um, leprosy is suggesting uh, by that those people maybe maybe this is a, a general suggestion that these people who do not want to enter do, if not do not want to they uh, have not the permission to enter into the fair ground of the temple so they therefore leprous shells uh, either refer to the beggars or uh, the low caste people <laughs> now these women uh, the fail early light catches ruined shells leaning against one another a mass of crouched faces without names uh, see that being in masses their faces crouched so crouched suggests that the upper area of the body bent forward by force or by something mm, because you were in a crowded area because too many people are thickened around you uh, that is why your face or your body may be crouched mm, you can you can have the idea of a crouch crouching tiger hidden dragon so crouching dragon is tiger is uh, pushing itself not forward but pushing itself downward backward in order to jump that is the crouching position so crouched faces without names you need to understand here they are without names or identity again we find discrimination against the beggars who seek materialistic things in a spiritual and holy land or the low caste people who cannot go inside because of their caste the discrimination is these beggars are seeking materialistic things that means the money and it is a spiritual land because it is a great temple and the holy land now the low caste people who cannot go inside because of their caste uh, they are leaning forward they are cast aside they are not permitted to enter into the land of holiness now whatever may be the idea the simple idea is this the line suggests the hollow and discriminatory nature of the rites and ritual of indian society and this is ironical too because you see we have lots of uh, strange ideas regarding this great temple and one of such is let me show you one of such is this the uh, if you if you can read it the shadow uh, uh, the main dome of the uh, temple is not visible uh, you know whatever be the time of the day so there will be no shadow of the main dome and nowhere so this is a strange idea another strange idea is the is no birds fly above the jagannath temple in puri now these are the uh, strange queer facts and factors of jagannath puri temple and here you have uh, an idea to what extent this temple is great and in that great temple inside such premises there is discrimination where religion has to be pure hearted where religion has to be broad minded so in religion you will have a broader vision of human being where human being can submerged into and here you have that idea completely reversed you still have uh, an idea of comparison you can do it by uh, comparing your uh, asleep in the valley with this poem because where warfare is supposed to be a great idea uh, to judge uh, you see that in asleep in the valley always people believe that war is a matter of glory it brings glorious past it brings glory to your family but in reality 
happen warfare brings only death destruction penalty so this is what where the glorious nature is completely destroyed by a simple idea that it really doesn't bring glory at all it brings rather destruction it brings rather catastrophe here also you have in this poem that religion is meant to be broader meant to be free meant to be uh, you know greater but in this greater idea you have somewhere that people are neglecting people only people are neglecting or human beings are neglecting human beings only so that's what uh, probably the poet means here you simply just avoid the identity of those people a mass of crouched faces without names so without names means you have no identity you do not exist in this world because you are a low caste you do not exist in this world now this is also another trademark of this poem because it hits on those grounds which are very stronger in general sense now this caste system indeed is a very strange one in india it is peculiar land where religion has a very strong sense now you can also have a comparison uh, either in comparison or in contrast you can bring the earlier poem called the bus here you see that um, the cast mark just beyond the cast mark beyond his eyebrows see this cast mark is important and i have already discussed about it in this poem still um, if you need something uh, to understand this is the basic idea that people in india believe in caste system so strongly and they do not want to get out they really do not want to get out of these facts uh, and factors on the other hand if you are really a holy uh, person or if india is a really a holy place or if religion is pure and sanctified then these caste systems should not be there because we all are human beings and nobody can be so demean so so uh, we cannot undermine a person by its caste ideas so you can bring comparison uh, to these lines with the lines of donat puri without names so and again and again uh, you know we need to go back to the former lines see that a skull in the holy sand still sits empty country towards hunger the skull and empty country again and again it it is pointing out that this is no more about that uh, romantic idea related to donat puri it is more and more about the hollowness the emptiness just like as in the valley presents the hollowness of war it it simplifies uh, the hollowness of religion in india now continuing with this in the fifth stanza and suddenly breaks out of my hide into the smoky blaze of sullen solitary pyre that fills my aging mother uh, suddenly the poet's thoughtfulness uh, is interrupted by the smoky blaze of a sullen solitary pyre the dead body is joyless and alone though being cremated in holy land the burning pyre reminds the poet of his old mother so all the three poems just we have read or four poems mm, an introduction by kamal das the bus by arun kolatkar or our casual in a tree by um toru dotto in every poem we have a similar idea of autobiographical elements the tone of autobiography uh, is present in every poem and then this poem the don at puri by janta mahapatra is also not out of that here the poet has an idea uh, a remembrance of his mother see that uh, into the smoky blaze of a sullen solitary pyre that fills my aging mother so she uh, he remembers um, his old mother and now the poem is a continuation of thought process and it was broken see um, if you are thinking something deeply if your expressions are going for that and you are not interrupted by anything uh, you can continue but when something interrupts you when something you know gives you a pause you, you have to rethink about it and why should it be like that if your thought process is that important nothing can break your um, you know memory nothing can break your thought process because you were too much thoughtful but if that gives you a 
vision of your earlier memories which are very stronger then the thoughtfulness state must be broken so just exactly happened with the poet see that the the phrase and suddenly so all of a sudden it happens breaks out of my hide into the smoky blaze of a sullen solitary pyre that fills my aging mother so into the smoky blaze of a sullen solitary pyre now sullen solitary pyre solitary pyre, pyre is solitary because it's uh, only mm, burning somewhere uh, alone that's why it's solitary that fills my aging mother so it is uh, you know giving me memory about my aging mother so my mother's memory is coming again and again because of this so and it happens all of a sudden breaks out of my height so i am thinking this height suggests that thought process thoughtfulness this is the meaning of the height out of my height continuing to, to the next stanza her last wish to be the cremate uh, to be cremated here twisting uncertainly like uh, light on the shifting sands Mm. So the poet memorizes his mother's past wish that was to be cremated here. Uh, probably the second last line continues from the smoky blaze of a sullen solitary pyre. The poet says that the smoke rising from the pyre is twisting because of the air that comes from the river. The air twists the pyre's smoke that makes the poet wonder. Uh, the certainty of the dead person's eternal peace because in spite of being burnt in a holy place, the smoke of the pyre, which is perhaps his soul, is affected by air. At the same time, the light is falling, which keeps shifting on the sand. So this is much more metaphorical and you need to understand this metaphoric situation. As for metaphor, uh, just like irony we have understood, here I have a picture which clarifies what is called metaphor. See that a metaphor is a figure of speech that compares two things by saying one thing is the other thing. That means an, the comparison between two unallied objects. Here the sun uh, may be compared with the human being like see in macbeth macbeth is compared with the prowess of a lion of a of a tiger so this is metaphor that the world is an unweeded garden now the world is an unweeded garden means world is metaphorically compared with the unweeded garden uh, and he has the heart of a lion see that here he has the heart of a lion so his heart someone's heart is compared with the heart of a land that means uh, the point of comparison is the courage so this is metaphor you all know about it now our concern is here that to what extent this becomes metaphoric i'm coming to this point again height the meaning of height uh, let me explain it a bit but before that see there is dawn so not only the physical but also metaphorical the poet's realization that is very belief it is a hollow which in spite of being uncertain has trapped the women discriminated against some people on the basis of caste and made the people believe in afterlife which is uncertain the realization can also be found in his other poem hunger where he realizes the actual hunger which makes the people commit mm, so naturally uh, the other poems like hunger in his other poem hunger he also points out the same uh, aspect so in hunger john to mahapatro uh, speaks about the idea of hunger that at the beginning of the poem is that of sex and sexual desire but in the end transforms into the hunger of stomach that leads the people to do anything this is the realization so the final outcome of the poem now you can go really through uh, the poem here a complete poem you can also have the explanation of uh, the whole poem in internet uh, which is quite handy i believe uh, but still if you need to compare the final realization of the poem Don at Puri and uh, with the realization of uh, this hunger you need to uh, be straight forward very straightforward in the sense that you have to comment on this particular idea that Mahapatra's idea in the poem Don at Puri the uh, hollow sham of religion hindu religion 
and the patriarchal society and its impact upon women and with that the poem of hunger which clearly states about the uh, sexual desire which is supposed to be the uh, one most good idea however at the end it turns out to be the hunger the hunger of stomach that uh, leads people to do anything that helps or that binds people to commit uh, any crime or any activity it is not about sex anymore it is not about sexual desire rather it is the hunger of the stomach so in that way you can make a comparison i'm not going to deal uh, with this whole poem so my point is torn at three but still you can have a better comparison with this now as we are talking about the end of the poem see uh, there uh, you have another idea see at the end of the poem um, see by comparing the by comparing the lights uncertain position to the fire smoke here you can see that suddenly breaks out of my hide into the smoky blaze of sullen solitary fire that fills my aging mother so uh, the position to the fire smoke the poet questions the very belief on which all the rites and rituals are formed and performed it is thus also uncertain because there is no certainty so the dawn is here uh, about the realization and I was talking about this height okay if, if it is not still clear to you let me uh, explain it a bit see that uh, and suddenly breaks out of my height into the smoky blaze of a sullen solitary fire that fills my aging mother so this solitary fire so fire indeed is an important metaphor because fire is supposed to be uh, a metaphor for heroism now here I have an um, I have a uh, picture for you see that mm, this one particularly this is a Vikings fire now the greatest impact of this fire you can also find in Beowulf because Beowulf's fire also suggests that after his death it was Beowulf's wish that after his death he should be cremated in that huge funeral pyre so that people will know that it is no other than Beowulf's fire so that fire also shows the victory shows that uh, someone's great uh, was dead so some victorious person was now uh, cremating or was now burning so fire basically suggests a symbol basically uh, pipifies a metaphor now here also in donakuri you can uh, now understand that this funeral fire is a is an instrument of the poem why it is an instrument of the poet because through this through this funeral pyre the poet tries to find out that even in funeral pyre which was his mother's last wish to be cremated on that ground even in that funeral pyre he doesn't find any solace any peace any any solitary um, idea so the position of the fire smoke uh, through this the poet basically raises the question uh, towards the very belief on which all the rites and rituals are formed and performed it is thus uh, naturally uncertain so dawn i was talking about that this is uh, not only physical but also metaphorical that realization is very belief is hollow which is inspired of being uncertain has trapped to the women women uh, those women uh, that he talked about at the beginning those women uh, has trapped discriminated against some people on the basis of caste and made the people believe in the afterlife which is uncertain so here the basic idea goes in that way that the poet tries to raise the question or directly questions the, the very basic idea of religion that it gives you a good heart it gives you uh, indiscriminate state of affair where everyone seems to be equal or everyone seems to have equal faith upon god so religion is not biased now it is typical that it becomes biased because some people who belong who are belonging to the upper caste they can enter into that uh, great temple and those who are not belonging to the upper caste they cannot enter the great temple so that becomes a difference here lies the question of belief that should i believe in that religion which discriminates between people or should i believe that religion which destroys faith so this is what 
Jonathan Mahapatra's basic concern. Now, as I was talking about the fire, about the fire, see, you see, at the break of dawn, as the poet looks at the single funeral fire burning, a sudden thought occurs to him that of his mother's last wish, as I had already talked about it. The phrase and suddenly breaks out from my height and suddenly breaks out from my height equals the thought springing out coming out just as the poet sprung out from his mother's womb see that womb is also a synonym of height so height may suggest the womb so this is another uh, realization the part of realization that you are coming into the world of knowledge you are just coming from the inside of the mother womb to the light to the other world where you have uh, uh, or where you will be experienced a lot of experiences are waiting for you to uh, only you are going to come and then you will have all the experiences so this this is another idea of the line so his aged mother wished that she must be cremated at this particular place so it comes across very strongly to the poet rites and rituals are mandatory however perhaps performing one's mother's last wish is far more important than those or these obligatory uh, dictates or religion uh, and doctrines of custom so it dawns on him all of a sudden the symbol of dawn is thus also one of realization so it dawns on him means that it gives birth a kind of realization birth him so the poet realizes that yes uh, finally this is the truth the, the truth of religion is this now okay you can also compare here see, see that this is not basically an idea of of epiphany or sudden realization at the end which you can find in your um, class 12 text uh, that the eyes have it the narrator realized that the girl was blind it was at the end happened so it was a kind of realization to the narrator now this also happened to arabi uh, the term epiphany from which it came now, as for epiphany let me show you some pictures here is it okay see that epiphany explanation moment of understanding or clarity in which a person comes to gain a new understanding about him or herself or the world around him or her so i had an epiphany when i realized so this is exactly um, when you realized all of a sudden something now uh, let me show you another one uh, this the last one epiphany a character's certain insight into a conflict situation a character's aha moment so aha yes now i have understood oh is that is that it so this is a kind of moment when you have understood when you realized something this is called an epiphany now epiphanies are available in james joss's works like uh, arabi as i said uh, this is a short story and uh he's in his novel uh, two novels specifically one is a portrait of an artist as a young man and another is ulysses in these two novels you also can get this epiphanic moments so here um, as for donna puri uh, john the mahapatra had an epiphany at the last moment so when her last wish to be committed here twisting uncertain uncertainly like light on the shifting sands or shifting sands the lights are even uncertain so everything seemed to be uncertain it was more important for her mother's cremation uh, her mother's cremation seemed to him more important rather than uh, any illogical ideas about religion as for john to mahapatra as a poet he is first of all an imagist and then anything else we can call him there is wordplay there is photographic quality in him now he is as a professor of physics picturizes a dawn breaking so nicely engaging in thoughts and ideas so serious and profound the title of the poem is just an appropriate as it is about the dawn breaking up on in the vicinity of puri as if someone were photographic uh, not someone was photographing the puri temple complex and the sea adjacent to the idea is of man of imagery thought and reflection as it is already said and the images uh, like those of the photographer endless grow with the noises and the uh, is the trailer of the starting the picture of the poem 
uh, a whole is called spooky and reminiscent of tales a different story of man and the world life and after world imagery so you, you can at least understand that this is a new beginning new realization where the poet tries to portray something else he is trying to build out of beautiful pictures out of beautiful pictures something very grave truth very straightforward at first the realistic ideas the stronger grounds of realism which hits definitely uh, the heart of human not because it is a, a simple way of expression but because the meanings are so grave and significant now what will you call when you look at this picture it is as beautiful as it should be see that endless vast sea the sky is blue and the crows are flying now behind the screen behind this beautiful picture where crows are flying and a boat is standing there it is romantic as well as feeling good uh, idea the idea of the picture indeed gives you a pleasure the pleasure you are seeking uh, and the people wish to go wish to visit puri because of these uh, kinds of scenarios now what happens when a poet turns all of this into a different idea a different sort of realization a different kind of picturization where you have not the least idea that this could be like this okay so you too as a reader have another realization okay the puri is not simply meant for this poetic uh, vicinities this poetic influences the ideas are so not so great these ideas are not totally appropriate what we can think about it it is not like that so you as a reader also realize this now as for your better understanding i have a concept for you that is called deconstruction shak derida in on grammatology in this book talked about deconstruction now deconstruction is something where you now it's a huge concept and it's not that easy to understand however for your purpose the amount you need to know that i'm explaining deconstruction is basically trying to do something uh, for example in a monolithic structure if you need to find out something else now find out all the faults and opposite directions in that monolithic, monolithic structure uh, something which is typically one now nothing can be one one word should not have a single meaning one word may possess may carry several other meanings so you cannot just explain one idea in one way there could be so many more ways to explain different ideas on the same subject matter now creating something new deconstruction is that process by which you are creating something completely new a newer version from the older one so the dogmatic belief we have despite of that dogmatism you can create something else here in this point as for don at puri it is not about the hindu religion's positive sides it is not about puri's dawn or uh, the romantic vision it is not about a constructive idea about dawn at puri or anything like that rather it is about a realization that it is hunger which destroys everything that it is the unification of kind of sensibility which makes us stronger about understanding something it is indeed a general realization towards a bigger goal that religion is not that positive energy caring for us rather it gives us a tint of negative uh, energy negative side effects now here i have a very good picture to show you what is called a proper deconstruction see that there is one uh, cartoon that the construction of your beliefs service center so the service center is uh, you know you you have a belief a uh, constructive belief about something that patriarchy is one something like that or female should be dominated or there is an existence of god such kind of beliefs i'm talking about so 
those beliefs are deconstructed in this service center and what it is said are you sure you want to do this you may feel numb angry depressed you may close mm, lose friends and your family will think you have lost it but in the long run if you hang in there you will find peace ready so you have to understand the bitter realization you need to realize it uh, to the core to the uh, to the ultimate level so it is not about the superficiality superficially you can understand so many things but it is not the end of everything so you have to strongly go against those dogmatic beliefs those monolithic structures and you need to build your own idea about those so here you have a constructive idea which is in other term a constructive idea the poet is here and down at Puri Janta Mahabhatta is trying to deconstruct the same age-old belief of Hindu myth the religion Hindu uh, the dawn at Puri see uh, you as you have another uh, notion here her mother's last wish to be cremated on the Puri beach rather in that cremation center why is that maximum Hindu believe that uh, that was the gateway to heaven so Jagannath's temple was there so it was the most favorable suitable place to be cremated to be cremated so naturally it was the gateway of heaven now in that gateway of heaven what we find hunger which is most striking and those women who are you know astray their austere eyes who are cast aside who were uh, neglected so even in such religion caste mark the caste system creates that dif uh, difference or creates that binary between us we are the people same human being if we belong to the same religion there shouldn't be any boundaries for us so because i am a low grade person i am a low caste born i am a uh, no i'm not a person to be a high born and those people who are high born they have the entrance to everything because i'm a low born i do not have the entrance to everything i do not have the pass key to enter into the other worlds this is a typical discrimination between human beings so religion is the responsible source to make that difference now Janta Mahapatra is creating that idea that we have an illusion about that and he is here to break that illusion by giving us the real picture through reality we need to understand this idea of religion I hope that you have understood about the poem the poem is not really that simple but if you can read it you can go through the poem in your own way you can have several other explanations too but do it in a creative way so that um, you can get something newer ideas you can get something bigger issues so while you start writing about this poem uh, okay I'm going to give you the questions later on but presently what I am intending to say is that go to the poem again and again with the explanation that I have given to you if it helps at all now try to build from other sources about the same poem if anything is left go on asking the questions on the commentary uh, comment boxes that are provided below so probably one box is given so you can write your own problem about uh, the poem any line about the poem there if i can follow it i can give you the answer so whatever it may be just uh, create your own idea about the poem do whatever you like and please try to suggest something that uh, if you have any problem or if anyone else have another problem any any problem if you have any suggestion about that problem try to give the answer to them okay so until next video we are finishing it here